Hi, my name is Frank A. Thomas, and I had the opportunity to speak with the Reverend Dr. Charles E. Goodman, Jr., who is the pastor at the historic Tabernacle Baptist Church in Augusta, Georgia. He was our guest for the African American Legacy Preaching Series. I want you to check out this clip from our conversation. To watch the full conversation, click the link at the end of the video or in the description below. Let's come back to the ALS. Mm. Let, you know, let's go back yeah. to it. It was an early diagnosis, mm -hmm. so tell me about that. We want to weave that into yeah. that. My senior year of college, you know, I was, I was planning to go to law school. I mean, everything had lined up that way. We've done the LSAT, all these things. And so that beginning semester, that fall semester of my senior year, I was developing some weakness in my hand. I thought it was carpal tunnel. I'm like, oh, nothing, you know. Let me figure it out, go get some tests, whatever. Maybe I'd get some whatever. And man, so I actually went home that summer, that, that winter, and my sports medicine doctor from my high school, I just went by and he noticed something. He said, I, you seem like you're favoring your hand. I said, yeah, it's just a little weak. He said, let me send you to this doctor. Let's, let's just get you checked out. And so January of that year, after a couple tests and things, I went to a couple doctors. January 22nd, 2001. I'm in my last semester of school. And I'm sitting there with my mom and my grandfather there. The doctor comes in and says, well, we've done every exhausted all tests we can. This is our only conclusion is that you have ALS. And in our opinion. So tell me, because we have an international yeah. audience, a lot of people. That yeah, it's called Lou Gehrig's disease. I mean, uh, the, the, the longer term for it is it's a disease that affects your muscles and your nerves. They stop communicating. It starts with weaknesses in your limbs and then eventually it just takes over your body. Your mind, crazy thing is almost like what makes it so horrific is that your mind is still sharp. You just can't function. And so literally they told me that January 22nd, 2001, in our opinion, you only have two years to live. Mm. And I am like, what in the world is going on? Mm -hmm. My grandfather, strongest man I know, first time I seen him cry, mm -hmm. mom crying. I'm like, I don't, I'm trying to go to law school. Mm -hmm. um, last semester of school, what in the world? Mm -hmm. I never get that night, and what makes that critical, I went home, you know, family, friends, were starting to leak out. You know, it's just, it's just a time. So I'm from Greensboro, but I went to school in Winston. So Wake Forest is in Winston. And I said, I just can't be here tonight. So I wanted to drive home. I want to drive back to school. Just let me get by myself. On the way back to school, it was late. It was like two, three o'clock in the morning. I called my pastor and he said, just meet me in Kernersville at McDonald's. So we get to McDonald's and he looks at me. He said, he said I don't think God is through with you. I have to really think this is God trying to get your attention. Mm -hmm. He said, I want you to pray about this. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting there like, I just heard the most devastating news of my life earlier that day. Mm. And now my pastor's saying, I think this guy tried to get your attention. So while I'm driving from Kernerville to Winston, I'm like, hold on God, there's gotta be greater ways to get my attention, <laughs> <laughs> better ways than this. Right. But I got in my room that night, doc, and this is what I said. And literally the thing that gave me peace and really has been the motivation and passion for me ever since. As I said, God, if it's just two years, I give you these two, I give you all I got. Mm -hmm. yep. So if this is what it means, if this is what I've been running, okay. I ain't running no more. What I need to do, if it's just two years, I give it to you. Mm -hmm. And from that critical moment of that night till now, I really feel that's the thing that kind of pushes me as passionate as hard as I go in ministry and preaching and pastoring is because I'm still living on that promise that night. Mm -hmm. And so from there, I began to be serious about ministry. I got licensed in April of that year. Um, Stop going, um, school's over, law school's out of my mind. Let me try to figure out school stuff. I don't know, what, I'm gonna give it to you guys. Whatever it is, if I don't make it through, fine. I'm just gonna go hard. And so that's why when people see what I do and how I do it, this is not a calling for me. I really feel like my life is tied to it. Mm -hmm. From that one promise and pledge I made, I feel like God has kept me way beyond what doctors said mm -hmm. as a way to say, all right, this is, it's the fuel for my life. So, so there is nothing I do even now that that does not yet still push, you know? And so people see like, man, you, you know, all this education, all, as much as you go, it's like, no, I got I got a promise that I always got to keep. Every day I wake up, I've got to keep this promise that I made to God over to now is what, 22 years ago.